Hey guys, welcome to the Testing Academy. My name is Pramod, and in this video, we will basically learn the manual testing interview question and answer for a two, two to three years experience. All right, so let's get started. All right, guys. So uh, this uh, video basically we are creating because guys, last time I have created a video for manual testing interview question and answer for especially for freshers. So where I have included a very important questions also and the part two of that series is also coming. Here we are targeting the two to three years experience and three plus years experience. Why? Because they have a different set of questions that generally people ask. I am talking about from experience of ten plus years. I have taken more than two fifty to seventy interviews right now. And what are the different so generally the questions are little different for 2 to 3 years now because the expectations are more right now right so let's see what are the questions so first one is basically related to the if you see we have a requirement traceability matrix what exactly it is okay uh, generally interviewer will basically ask you that okay uh, pramod let me know what exactly is the rtm or we call it requirement traceability matrix so what you can do is that uh, I have basically prepared a template also where I have discussed about the RTM and it is basically if you see let me give you a very simple example what you need to tell them exactly right so first of all how you can give the answer for this is basically you can give them give them a uh, definition and what whatever that you know need or whatever whatever that you know about it in a pro, in a very simple high language way and you can give them a proper template view right you don't have to create a template but you can give them a keys or important fields which are required in the rtm okay so that's that's where they know that okay probably you have done some of the work and you know what exactly is a rtm okay so now let's understand what exactly is a rtm okay if you see i have basically mentioned here that it is used to track the requirements right let me make it my uh, highlighter it is used to track the requirement and check the current progress of requirement are met or not okay let me zoom it little bit so that you can understand okay here right so rtm or requirement traceability matrix in a high level way what you can tell them is basically a mapping between a test cases and your requirement okay so for example i have a two requirement that login should work and dash dashboard page should log with the login page how many test cases that i have written and the dashboard page how many test cases i have written i will basically map that and if there is any change in the requirement i will know that because you will basically adding that requirement i will modify my test cases accordingly so there will be a traceability of requirement as well as test cases and this matrix is called as the rtm i hope this is clear but let's see the example here okay and if you go to this uh, template where if you see right i have added a sample also for example i have basically tell them uh, told them that okay these c1 c2 c3 are basically requirement like login page dashboard page or some other pages right and these are the technical requirements and these are the test cases written for it okay so it's a basically a map map or you can say it's a matrix where you can mention that this for this project these test cases and these requirements are basically mapped together whenever there is a change in requirement we will modify the test cases also but reverse will probably will not happen okay so those things we are basically aware but now to be honest i have prepared a extensive video in depth video of rtm and on the testing academy right and if you go here and type rtm right you will see Uh, this video where it has more than 30000 views where i have basically explained with the template what exactly it is different types of traceability matrix also make sure you watch that also okay so i'm going to give you the link in the description also so you can check check it or you can go to the testing academy search for itm and you will know this okay so this is uh, a very important question to start with Question number two is basically about a what exactly is a exploratory testing and trust me this is very important question and people will ask you what exactly is a exploratory testing and what what do you know about it so exploratory testing if you know it basically exploring the application where you don't have to create a test cases in advance you can check the functionality in a ad hoc manner ad hoc basically means you can check it whenever whatever that you want to check it for example suppose someone has given me an application of a banking application right i can check whatever the features are there i will prepare a list of the feature that i need to check i will not create a test plan around it i'll just check okay login page is working fine sign up is working fine transferring of money from one account to the second account is working fine adding a new account is working fine or not and i will basically do a exploring the application of the exploring the features i'll not write the proper Test cases on this, and this is gonna be a time bound, a uh, time bound activity, time bound, and I will prepare a notes out of it. And whenever I find a bug, I'll basically note down that this is a bug that I have encountered, and this is these are the steps to execute or a probably re probably reproduce. Okay, that you can check. So uh, we generally, if you see, 
I have mentioned, right? We generally do a scripted testing, right? Scripted testing is basically navigate to this. So if you have watched my uh, test cases template or a test cases video, where we are generally do a scripted testing, right? I'll basically check the login page. I will enter username, password, and those things, and this will be a scripted one. But here you are checking the. uh features and you are exploring the ex uh, exploring the future randomly right so that is where it is it is helpful and trust me it works very 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 well okay and most of the time it's a time box generally we have one hour two hour and after this people will basically share the bugs and the flaws that they have learned it's a skill based not a scripted skill based basically means uh, these are generally done by the qas who have some experience of the and they know about the application very well not application i mean they know about the product for example if it is related to a banking domain and i am ex- i have expertise in banking i know how the transfer of the account different works and all then it's a very interesting way to uh, interesting then i will be very helpful i mean whenever if i do the exploratory i will able to catch more bugs on this okay so this is very important and when to use the exploratory testing right this is very important so uh, the testing uh, the testing team has experienced tester whenever we have experienced tester you can do exploratory testing early iteration is required for example if you want to check for example developer has recently made the application and they want to check okay major functionalities are working fine or not then they can do uh, this is there is a critical application that you want to check and exploring exploring the application that you want to do new tester into the system uh, if a new tester is entering to the system or a team they can explore the application because by exploring they will learn a lot right so that's where the exploratory testing is helpful okay so this is very very important test uh, thing that you guys should know okay and here is the link uh, like if you see a sample test case okay now let me zoom out a little bit yeah okay so here if you see we have a test charter they are basically chart they have written it steps like what exactly in, in the end they are presenting that i have basically i have tried login with the user login with this test test environment was this thing i have started with the, this time this is a test name duration 60 minutes and notes down and bugs whatever the bugs they have found so everything they are documenting they are not writing any test case this is a really important exploratory okay so this was it and i hope you have learned that about the exploratory testing this is very important question also okay so let's move on to the third one which is basically yeah is a bug defect defect bug life cycle right or a what is it yeah defect life cycle okay so defect if you know it's basically a deviation right kind of deviation where you will see a deviation from a expected result and actual result for example suppose you are uploading a picture on a uh, on a twitter profile you are not able to do it then it's a defect so generally defects goes through a particular life cycle right different status statuses right so first of all a tester whenever he is testing a application right it will open a new bug so we call it a new here right then it will go to a signed state it will basically go to a developer it will go to a open state where he will open it if it is a not a valid bug he will reject it or a deferred it deferred basically means he is uh, right now in this uh, it, it is not a priority right now so we will do it later so they will just defer it right and uh, or it can fix that retest it so you can retest it and reopen it and verify it and close it so this is kind of a defect life cycle you should know each and every step of it because these are very important and very important question also for a manual testing perspective guys just make sure you do that because i have prepared a extensive video around it you can go to testing academy channel and see the bug life cycle where i have prepared a very important video around it you can check it out okay how to write a proper bug report and bug life cycle defect life cycle right this video which is in depth in 5 minute you will get everything every answer okay so yeah you can check it out now let's move on to the very important real things which is uh, seven principles guys this is very very important and people will ask you this question especially with the 2 3 years experience right what are the seven principle of software testing and again i have explained this very well in the multiple videos and uh, but i'll give you a very simple way i will give you just go through let's go through the uh, quickly the seven principle are basically testing show the presence of defects okay it basically means uh, whenever you do testing right there will be a defects so this is very important and uh here it's basically mentioning that no application is 100% bug free okay so if you are doing a testing you will find some of the bugs this is very this is like a first principle second principle is basically exhaustive testing is not possible it basically means you cannot do 100% testing you can only do high level testing where you are sure that okay 
i have tested the tested these features and they are working fine fine right now i'm assuming that it will work for other things also okay so there is a little assumption in this case so here exhausting testing is not possible right even even you put a 100 tester or a 1000 tester you will not able to do a complete testing of a product okay so you have to rely on the expertise of a set tester that okay with the high level test case they are covering most of the testing most of the products requirement and a features okay early testing basic uh, the third principle is related to early testing early testing basically means that if you are testing early in a design phase or in a product whenever you are basically develop in a development phase then it is easy for a, if if there is a bug or a defect then you can catch it then it will be uh, a cost effective right it will be easy and uh, cost to fix is very very low but if uh, it is in production right now it is in production phase user find that bug then it will be very difficult so make sure the principle says that early testing is important defect clustering basically means that this i'm going quickly guys but there is extensive video around this okay so let me uh, principles so this is a video i have prepared so in 8 minutes you will see a proper explanation so you can watch it but i'm right now i'm giving you a very very uh, interesting in an interesting way where you can remember this as a notes so defect clustering basically means if you find some bugs in here for example in this area right then you will see that uh, the other bugs are also in this area so they are basically uh, defects are in clusters okay and you will not able to find in another module but there is if there is a module where where we have bugs right you will you will find more bugs there so this is actually a defect clustering principle pesticide paradox basically says that says that if you basically execute same number of test cases again and again you will not able to find the new bug this is true right testing in context dependent basically means uh, that uh, for web testing you require a different type of a testing approach for application uh, application or mobile mobile application testing you have require a different approach so testing is context dependent whatever the context that you have it's a, it's depend on that if you are testing a e-commerce website it's a different from a banking website okay so that you need to check absence of error falsy basically says that uh, that you cannot test a uh, so a, a product cannot be 99% bug free so it should it will have some of the errors or some of the fallacies so you have to live with it so that's kind of a principle okay i know it's a little uh, i have not explained properly in this one but i am just giving you the example right these are important and i will basically encouraging you to watch this video where you will basically learn more okay but i'm giving you the important questions that generally people ask with this okay so now let's uh, jump into the question number 5 and here is the real world scenario questions okay real world scenario questions are there now uh, these are re real world scenario question which is which is basically you see how will you estimate a login page with a dashboard page and what type of testing you will perform so think about it and write down in the comment uh, what will be your estimate for a login page simple login page where is a first page is login page and second page is dashboard page what will be your estimations on this okay and we are thinking about from a scrum or a agile methodology think about it and give me the answer i'll back okay all right if you are done the exercise that's fine but okay we have this uh, app.vw.com we have a login page and a, uh, a dashboard page Uh, you have to give them a estimation in man days or a man hours that you can do this uh, what kind of testing that you will be performing it will, will you do the uh, cbt or a cross browser testing or not and you don't have to ask i mean you don't have to assume anything ask ask the questions okay so here what you can show so answer for this is very simple uh, for a login page and a dashboard page i can see that simple login is there and dashboard page there is nothing there right so estimation i think it can take around 2 to 3 Three days, right? And the answer for this is because I'm going to do a functional testing. In functional testing, I'm going to do uh, basically prepare my test cases by using the black box testing techniques. Like I will prepare a boundary values. I'll prepare using equivalence partition, decision table, state transition, right? And a pairwise testing to reduce the number of test cases and cover and basically increase my test coverage. And I will ask this question like, do you guys require performance testing, stress testing, uh, load testing, cross browser testing, mob, uh, checking on the mobile and other things or not? So I will ask this question so that uh, they will know that okay, I know the full approach as a manual tester what I am doing because I will be preparing a proper plan with estimations. Okay, okay, it will take around two to three days. I am just giving you a rough estimate. It's not like the perfect example, but uh, rough estimates will be like this. And if you if we reduce the number of testing type, then definitely. we can reduce the number of days also man hours also right so that you can give an example so this was the response for this question okay 
next question is basically what to do if the if the mobile or application that you're testing not not suitable for a testing okay what to do what would you will do so basically what you will do is basically you can do a smoke testing uh, right you can smoke test a build or you can ignore a build right you can say that or you can send them a report that okay these are the multiple we are finding a multiple bugs what should we do now because we are not able to test properly this is a real world scenario and this will be a very important question for a two to three years of experience so make sure you pay attention now question next question is basically developer said this please don't add this bug to the jira this happens very time many times where you basically go to a developer and show them that okay this is a bug and they will tell you that okay i'll fix i'll i will fix but uh, uh, please don't add it to jira because this will uh, create a negative impact on me I, but i would suggest is do, don't don't do it don't don't have or avoid any kind of a brotherhood with the developer it's it's your responsibility to add bugs or you can raise the concern whenever you think okay even if you have a doubt i would suggest you to create a jira and get it rectified okay it is okay if your bugs get rejected but it is if it is not documented you will be responsible for it okay so make sure as it is with the 10 years experience i'm telling you you have to add a jira whenever it is required okay even if it is a concern you can do that okay uh, another interesting question generally people ask is uh, what to do if you have less time to test so what i would uh, give you this answer is basically have your proper estimates let them know that okay uh, if i am if, if if i don't have a time then this will there will be a slippage of bugs because there will this is the risk that you can identify tell them that i have a process where i will be creating a test plan test execution bug reporting execution and retesting is so it will get impacted so those thing you can tell them properly so this is very important this is very important that this is like a live example or a situation based question in a manual testing that generally they will ask you okay and this is very interesting question and i think i have seen people are asking this when you will stop your testing so you can stop whenever there is a deadline deadlines when you see that test test cases that you have prepared are done when test test budget is if deplicated i mean this is uh, generally not happens when you have oh, enough coverage of the functionality when bug rate bug bug rate is basically falling then you can know that okay now your application mobile application is working fine because suppose you have raised a 10 bugs right and now you are not able to find new bugs in the and they have fixed it right and now you are not able to find the bugs then definitely it basically now it's a time to stop testing and release that product so and you can do that in beta alpha, alpha beta also periods right so those things also so i hope this is uh, helpful guys uh, let me know in the comment if this is helpful i'll prepare a part 2 of the series for the specially for the 2 to 3 years of experience and uh, this was a interesting part right let me know in the comment please make sure you like and subscribe and type pi 2 if you want to see more videos more live example i am basically giving you the real life question which generally people ask I know these are little theoretical also but these are very very important manual testing interview questions and they will help you a lot all right thanks for watching this video and i'll see you in the next video